Hi everybody, I'm Susan Mulvihill. Welcome back to my Zone 5B Vegetable Garden. Boy, the weather is gorgeous today. There's a nip in the air, but it's nothing like the weather we've had for the last couple of days where the winds were just howling and it was very cold. So today, in addition to being a beautiful day, it's an exciting day because I'm going to plant my leeks, beets, and Swiss chard. Oh yeah, and I got my hair cut. It's quite short, but it feels good. These are some of my leek seedlings. The variety is Bulgarian Giant. And if you didn't see the following photo from last year, you will now know why I love growing them every single year. Now before we get to the leek planting part, I wanted to give you a bit of the backstory on the leeks because my method for growing them has been evolving over the last year and it will continue to evolve into next year because I keep learning better ways to start them and to plant them. In the past, I've started my leeks indoors and I'm still going to do that, but with one seed per cell in a pony pack type of arrangement. And as the seedlings grow, every time they get a little taller than two inches, I snip them back. I let them grow a couple more inches and I cut them back to two inches. And I do this for quite a few weeks. Now it's not because I'm a mean gardener, it's because I've always wanted to make the plants focus their energy on developing a good, strong root system. And that is still important. However, I really enjoy watching videos of different British allotment gardeners, and I have learned a lot of great things about growing leeks. For one thing, they do not cut them back repeatedly like I do. They just plant them and let them grow until it's planting time outdoors. Now, I started my seeds in January, and they've been biding their time. They are looking great and the weather is finally safe to plant them. But the other thing I wanted to explain is that when I plant them out in the garden, what I've done in past years is I have dug a trench, planted them upright, of course, in the bottom of the trench, and then I slowly, through the season, fill soil in around the base of each plant, up to maybe about six inches of the stalk. And that's because my goal has been to have that lovely white stock, which I believe is more tender and more flavorful. Well, it's a pain in the neck doing that, to be honest, so I'm changing that method as well. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to dig cylindrical holes and one plant per hole. I am not going to have to use a trench method. I'm just going to put them in the hole I'm going to let the soil slowly fill in around them over a few weeks. And this is going to be so much easier than what I've done in the past. Now, the other thing that I learned after I planted my leek seedlings indoors this year is that the British gardeners do not plant them individually one seed per cell like I have been doing. What they do is they use a container that's a bit on the deep side, they plant the seeds, and they just let them grow. So they say that they're easy to peel apart from one another at planting time. That sounds like a lot easier too. So that's what I'm going to do next year. But this year, I'm changing a couple things, not cutting them back, and also planting them in holes rather than burying them in a trench and slowly filling that trench in. So I've gathered together all of my leek seedlings. I just counted them and I have 51. And so I'm going to do roughly four rows of them for just half this bed if all works out. There is something I wanted to clarify. On leek plants, there's this main stem and then there are the parts where the leaves emerge from the stem. The reason I'm not going to just dig holes and put the plants in and fill the soil right around them immediately is because you don't want soil to go into that little nook where the leaf is attaching to the stem because that can cause rotting. So that's why I'm making a hole, setting them in, which I'll show you in just a moment, and then letting them grow 
and I'll let the soil fill in slowly but surely. So this is my handy dandy tool called a dibble or a dibber and I'm using it to make a hole that I will set each seedling into. So let's see if I can make 51 holes. <laughs> I also wanted to mention that to prepare this bed, I added about an inch of our own organic compost to the soil surface. There's no need to work it in because the nutrients will filter down into the soil all by themselves. And I also added a little bit of bone meal. That will promote good root growth, which I think is important for these leeks. I have fed the leek seedlings a few times using a liquid nitrogen fertilizer. And that's to promote some green growth. Okay, so here's a really nice pony pack of leeks. And I have pushed up on the bottom of this pony pack so that I can gently pull this out. You never want to tug or pinch the stem of a seedling because that destroys cells and it can actually kill the plant. So you don't want that to happen. So look at that, isn't that a beauty? And what I'm doing because of the shape of each cell being rectangular, I'm just removing a little bit of the outer potting soil so that they fit into their holes better. And then I'm just sort of guiding it down into the hole to the bottom. This is going to be so much easier. And you know, it's always good to learn new things, right? Look at those. Wow. And I'm being careful, but just moving them down to the bottom of each hole. This one actually has a baby leak right next to it. So I'm going to carefully tease them apart. Let's see if that goes. They're pretty attached to each other. There we go. So one in there. And one in here. There's two more that are together. And that happens. Sometimes I don't realize, actually there's three here, that I've dropped a black seed onto dark potting soil and so I don't realize I have an extra seed or two in the cell. So I wanted to give you a little better perspective, I hope. You know, I'm a lefty and so I have a tendency to get my hands in the way. Plus I've got a shadow here, that's not helping matters. But here are some more leeks. And just gonna move a little soil off of there. Drop them into the hole and I'm carefully on either side of the stalk pushing it down so it's in the bottom. Here's a leek that has a little companion. <laughs> so I got a twofer. But next year I'm gonna grow them all in a single container. And I'm really excited to see how that goes. There we go. Here's another one that's got a buddy. There we go. Okay. Now Bill is quite the onion grower and he's intending to plant his onion seedlings on the other end of this bed. So that's why I'm just taking up half the bed. I have to share. <laughs> 
I think I'll also use a lot less seed starting mix with the new method next year because I won't have a bunch of individual cells, just enough soil in the bottom of a container to hold all of the seeds that I want to start. Okay, as you can see, the leeks are planted. I have just a few extras that I thought I would add to the beet and Swiss chard bed as maybe like a little divider or something. But I've probably taken up a little more than half of the bed, but don't tell Bill. <laughs> and I also wanted to mention that the holes that I have made with my dibber are about six inches deep and the plants are at least four inches apart. The last thing I'm going to do is just gently water them in a little bit and that is to get a little bit of soil around those roots in the bottom of each cylinder. This drip irrigation system, which uses drip tape, is going to gently weep water out of it, and that should be very safe and not overwater the plants and cause any erosion. Okay, next up is planting the beet and Swiss chard seeds, and I'm sorry to point out that this bed is rapidly getting into the shade because it's late afternoon but I'll make sure that you can see exactly what I'm doing. Now, just like with the leek bed, I added in some bone meal and compost so that there are good nutrients in the soil. And you're probably noticing that there is a little bit of a different irrigation setup here. So in addition to the four lines of drip tape, we have a temporary system here that Bill created, and it's got little micro sprinklers. And these will be left on the bed to keep the soil pretty moist while the seeds are germinating. Once the seedlings are up and doing well, we can plug this and move it to another bed as needed. Now the varieties that I'm growing of beets are Burpees Golden and Cylindrical, sometimes referred to as Cylindra. We love both of those kinds of beets. And then I'm growing Rainbow Blend Swiss Chard. Since the bed is all ready to go, all I have to do is just take my iron rake handle and I realize you won't be able to see it here but what I'm doing is just making a little furrow with the end of the handle that makes it a lot easier so I'll grow two rows of beets and a row of Swiss chard Okay, now you can see the furrow a little bit better. I'm going to plant the beet seeds first and they need to be planted half an inch deep. And that's why I made this furrow. It just makes it easier to plant them. If you look at the seeds, they look exactly the same as Swiss chard seeds. They are clusters of seeds. You do not need to separate them. Isn't that great news? <laughs> and I'm just gonna plant them, oh, a couple inches apart. Once the seeds are planted, you just knock roughly half an inch of soil on top of them. These are really easy to grow. It's not too scientific. And then I always like to firm them in just so they make good contact with the soil. Okay, and then it's basically the same drill for planting Swiss chard. Now Swiss chard and beets are both members of the beet family. So that's why it's so similar. I'm gonna plant them at the same depth and spacing, cover over the furrow, pat it to make good contact, and water them in. Okay, so I've got the beet and Swiss chard seeds in the ground, now what? They typically take seven to 10 days to germinate or sprout. And once the plants are roughly three to four inches tall, I like to thin them, and that is within the row. So for beets, I like to thin them so they're about three inches apart, and that's so that there's plenty of room for each root to grow. I mean, that's the main thing you're going to be eating, right? So you want to give them enough room. Don't leave them crowded. For Swiss chard, 
those are going to be larger plants so I typically thin them so the seedlings are about six inches apart in the rows. Now remember to eat your thinnings. Swiss chard and beet greens are absolutely delicious and I'm embarrassed to admit this but up until last year I had never eaten beet greens before. Anytime I thinned I just put them in the compost pile because I thought that's what I should do. Well this time they had such beautiful leaves and I thought hmm I wonder if they're good. So I snipped off all the leaves, I steamed them and served them with a little bit of melted butter and some red wine vinegar. Oh my gosh I have been missing this all of these years. So don't make that mistake definitely eat your thinnings. Now I've mentioned this in previous videos but just in case this is the first of my videos that you're watching I wanted to explain that beets, spinach, and Swiss chard all belong to the beet family. They are very susceptible to a nasty insect called the leaf miner. The adult form is a fly. It lays eggs on the leaves the eggs hatch into little maggots and they tunnel through the cells within the leaves. If you've ever seen a beet, spinach, or Swiss chard leaf and it has a lot of little squiggly lines in it or maybe an area that looks kind of transparent in the leaf, that's what it's caused by. Fortunately, it's very easy to control them. All you have to do is have a barrier of some sort that keeps them away from your plants. Now I mentioned before that we're going to make a hinged cover for this raised bed to protect the beets and Swiss chard from leaf miners. It's going to be covered with that agricultural insect netting that I've mentioned in past videos, but we haven't had time to make it yet. So in the meantime, what I'm going to do, and I mean like right now, is put hoops over the beds and floating row cover. So that's a lightweight fabric that lets in sunlight and moisture but it acts as a physical barrier to keep certain kinds of insects away from your crops. And in this case, it works beautifully for keeping leaf miners away from those plant leaves. But eventually, hopefully in about two weeks, you will see a hinged cover over this bed because we also wanted to test that agricultural insect netting against the leaf miner. So stay tuned on that part. I thought you might like to see how our garlic bed is coming along. Look at the plants, they look awesome. So we planted them last fall. We're going to harvest them in the summer when the lowest four or five leaves turn brown. We'll pull them up, dry them, and start enjoying them. Thanks so much for watching today, everybody. I'll see you next week.